Hello there, dear viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, I want to try to clarify something when it comes to using external hardware send effects with your iDevice. <laughs> So the way that I've got it set up right now is I've got two iPads. I've got my main iPad and then I've got a secondary iPad. And here is where I'm, I'm using a reverb basically. And I'm using that to reverberate the Minth synthesizer I've got going on here. And so the way that it's set up is with two sound interfaces, one sound interface for each iPad. So this one is connected to this one and this one is connected to this one. And the important thing here is that on this side, where I'm loading the reverb that I'm going to use as an effect processor, basically, you only need a sound interface that has one input and one output, or one input pair and one output pair. However, on this side, where we've got the main iPad and our main sound interface, you need one input pair and two output pairs, at least. The reason to why is because if you've only got one output, then what you're creating is a feedback loop. So you're getting the same signal going out and then back and out again and then back, and that's no good. And the reason to why I'm explaining this is because I recently reviewed the Roland Go Mixer Pro X, which is an awesome sound interface. And I recommend it to mobile music producers who need something really flexible and light in their bag. However, people wanted to know how you could set something like this up with Roland Go Mixer Pro X. You can, but it will only create a feedback loop because it doesn't have multiple uh, line outputs, basically. So main iPad, main sound interface, you need to have multiple outputs. Okay, so hold up. Some people probably want to know about the actual sound interfaces I'm using, their models and everything, and it's not really important right now. Now, I just want to explain the concept of, of this setup. However, towards the end of the video, I will talk about the sound interfaces and I will give you a list of iOS compatible USB class compliant sound interfaces if you want to go and get something for yourself. All right, so let's get back to it. And so in this case, I'm using one output pair for my speakers and the other one I'm using for the hardware send. So if we actually look at this setup and look at the, the, this AUM setup right now, I've got Minth synthesizer at the input slot, and then it's going in through the effect slot here. And inside the effect slot, I have loaded up a hardware send and I'm using that second stereo pair. Now, the signal is also going out to the main where I've got it connected to my speakers at the same time, which is why you can't use a sound interface with only one output. So the signal goes from Mint Synthesizer out through the stereo pair here into this cable, into this sound interface to the input, and then the input of this sound interface is connected to the input slot of this AUM session. And then it goes in through a reverb unit and I've set the mix to maximum because you don't want any dry signal in there. If you have a dry signal in there, you're gonna end up with maybe phasing issues. So the signal is going through the reverb, out through this sound interface into this cable, and then back into the input of this sound interface. And this input is connected on this channel right here. And then it's connected to the main output. So it goes from here, out here, here, around, in, in, through, out, out, in, in. All right, so with this setup, I now have this reverb coming into this channel. And so... Now, one of the reasons you might want to do a setup like this is to offload uh, processing of effects onto another iDevice. It could be an iPhone or an iPad. And if you're using uh, an older iPad or an older iPhone, 
you're going to be limited on hardware resources. And so the less processing you have to do on of, of heavy reverbs, for instance, or delays, well, the more power you have over for loading synthesizers and other things. So it's a, it's a nice workaround for stuff like that. And the more outputs you have and inputs you have on your sound interfaces, well, you can actually end up setting up a whole session with a bunch of send effects. Okay, so to all beginners, let's say that this sound interface only had one output and one input. What would actually happen? Well, first of all, I'm gonna pull down on the levels of all of this, and then I'm gonna disconnect this and disconnect my speakers, and then actually use this as my send effect. And so the main channel is now being used as the effect send. Let me disconnect the reverb here. So basically the sound is just going round and round and round and round and this can end up destroying your ears because it can get very loud extremely quickly. And so if you're doing experiments with feedback loops, which is actually something you can use, and I've done a video on that, you should be loading a limiter in the effect slot. Always use a limiter if you're unsure about volumes uh, of any apps, just to protect your ears and protect your speakers. Now there are other setups that we can do, like this one for instance. Here I've gotten rid of the second iPad and its sound interface completely because we don't need it. I'm using an external effects processor, it's the Korg KP3, a chaos pad. And I mean it could literally be anything, it could be your most favorite space echo, it could be your favorite uh, lexicon rack unit, it can be so many different things. The only important thing you need to consider is that the sound interface you want to use for setting up external hardware sends, well, it just needs to have multiple outputs. Okay, so the small interface I've been using in this video is the UA202. It's a smart little device. The only thing wrong with it is that it doesn't have a headphone port because if it had that, it would be perfect. It's really great and it costs almost nothing. I bought it from Toman. So if you need an extra little sound interface for stuff like this, if you've got an extra iPad lying around, then you can easily set something like this up as long as your main interface has multiple outputs. So when it comes to the main sound interface, I was using a Novation Audio Hub 2x4. They do not sell these anymore anymore, so there's no use in looking unless you can find them used. Why do I use it? Because it has a built-in USB hub, which is great when you're also using multiple USB MIDI controllers at the same time. You can connect them all directly to the sound interface. It's, it's great. If you want something to multi-track with, meaning a sound interface with multiple inputs, and outputs, then these ones will work for that. I haven't tested out all of these myself. However, I do see people talk about these a lot whenever they're discussing multi-tracking on iOS with iPads and iPhones. Now, me personally, I'm using the Steinberg one up here and I absolutely love it. And one of the things I really love about it is the fact that you can actually internally add effects directly to the inputs and save them like that because it has its own internal DSP processor. It's awesome. If you like this type of content, why don't you give me a thumbs up? If you don't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to support the work I do here on the channel, then comment down below, share my videos. And if you want to support me in a financial way, then go check out my music. I've got a full list of links down in the description. And you can also go to Patreon or PayPal. All the links are in the description. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. When you feel that pain, I'm taking everything.